What's up, everybody? Today, I just kind of want to go over some common mistakes made with soil tests. Hopefully, save yourself some frustration, some time, and maybe even some money. So let's just delve right into it. So one of the most common things I see that's going wrong, either looking at different people's soil tests, uh, either on Facebook groups and stuff like that, is you'll see a lot of them that will look very much like this where the N, P, and K are really high, and their test comes back with no recommendations, well, it's simply because they haven't bothered to wait between the time of application of any nutrients and when they actually take their soil samples. Ideally, you want to wait a minimum minimum of 30 days. Ideally, would be 45 or even 60 days, sometimes even longer, depending on what you're applying. There's a lot of slow-release fertilizers out there now. Some of them claim for up to six months. You don't want to be testing the nutrients that you're applying. You want to know what's there uh, in the soil without any of the supplements so that you know what you need to add. So another common thing I see is a lot of people will get their soil test back either from Yard Mastery or My Soil or any university, and they don't know how to read them. They don't take advantage of the uh, recommendations that are given by which whoever they used some are some labs are very good about giving really good recommendations others not so much they just kind of leave you scratching your head now if you're using the my soil kits you can very well see what the recommendations are if you log into your results and a lot of people are missing that there are recommendations down here in the lower area on what they can apply to correct their deficiencies now, this doesn't always mean you have to buy the exact items that they're showing here, but it gives you a good idea. An example for mine is, you know, they list an uh, organic as a 1001, and that's because basically it's showing low amount of nitrogen, which I would expect for not applying anything for several months. And then, of course, my potassium levels are low, and they've been historically low. So these are the three things you want to focus on, the N, P, and K, the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. The rest of this stuff, all these other micronutrients, they're okay to work on. They're nothing usually to be heavily concerned about. The biggest thing you probably want to watch is the pH levels. This is the one thing you should be looking for on any soil test is where the pH level is at. And ideally, you want that between about 5.8 and maybe 7 or 7.2. Now, another thing that people tend to miss is that up here where it says shop recommended products, Yes, it gives you links to different things where you can buy different products. Even if you don't want to buy those exact products, you don't have to. You simply get an idea of what they're recommending and see what you can find locally or wherever you want to source it from. If you're not really familiar with the different micronutrients and macronutrients and how to correct them, if you see down here, I don't know if you can see this on my screen, there's a learn more link here and you click on that and it goes through and explains what each of the nutrients do, what they're used for in the, in the plant production. And another thing that you can use also is down here under the fertilizer recommendations for pH adjustments and micronutrients, there's another one here that says learn more. And if you click that, it will give you great recommendations or on how to correct different uh, pH things, different micronutrients. There's a wealth of information here that people are just missing. And you know if you're gonna pay for soil tests, you want to get everything out of it that you possibly can. So it, these are things that people are missing. It, they can look into it and get their own questions answered if they just look a little further. And that kind of leads me into my next thing. People don't really ask, ask themselves, why do they need a soil test? There's a lot of people out there recommending that you absolutely have to do a soil test every year, every two years, every three years. Some people will say you don't need one at all. Look, just ask yourself why you want a soil test, okay? For me, I just want green, healthy, lush growing grass, right? So soil tests, I don't need to dip into all the science, me personally, and, and I don't have a degree in this stuff. I don't understand exactly how all the science behind the soil stuff works and just ask yourself why. It, I'm pretty sure your answer is going to be almost the same. So what you are looking for, your end game is, is you want to know what to apply to your lawn, right? That will make it nice, green, and lush. There's two different types of tests available to you, right? 
you can either go with Waypoint Analytical or Spectrum Analytics, your local extension office, your local university, and those are traditionally standardized testing that have been done for decades, okay? Then you have the MySoil test kit or the Yard Mastery test kit, which is a slightly different testing method. However, they yield very much different results, and there's a lot of confusion about that. And I'm going to try and put this as simple as possible. Your standardized soil test from any university or any accredited lab or anything like that shows you the total nutrients in the actual soil. What it doesn't show you is what's available of those nutrients to the plant. It doesn't show that. You have to figure that out on your own based on various factors such as the different minerals interacting with each other, the pH and all that. The difference with the MySoil test kit or even the Yard Mastery kit is that it's showing you of those nutrients, what is available to the plant so that you can properly supplement it, which makes it real simple. That's the easiest way to kind of describe the difference in the two tests. Um, there's been a lot of commotion about how reliable these tests are. They're great. I've been using them for three years, had absolutely no problems. Nice green lush lawn, everything grows well, and I'm not wasting money on a bunch of products that I don't need for nutrients I don't need to supplement, and I can invest the money that I'm saving there and other nutrients that I do need and making pH adjustments or, or adding more potassium. So my suggestion to you is if you're going to do soil tests and you decide to pick one of them, stick with that one so that you understand that there's a difference. Um, there's even differences if you were to take a spectrum analytics test and compare it to a waypoint test. They're going to be slightly different. Every lab is different. These are just two different methods of looking at the result. So if you would just want to keep it very simple, the MySoil test kits are great to use. They're very basic, and very simple to use, and relatively inexpensive. So if you decide to do a soil test this year, that's great. I'm glad to see that you're doing that. Hopefully we all can save some money this year. If you're interested in those kits, I'll leave a link in the description down below for both the MySoil kit and the Yard Mastery kit. Um, as well as Waypoint Analytics, Spectrum Analytics, you can look into it and do all your own research. But if you haven't subscribed already, feel free to do so, and I'll see you in the next one.